Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be teaching you about multi-dimensional arrays in Roblox Studio. So you may be asking, what is a multi-dimensional array? So normal arrays in Roblox are just like 1D, one-dimensional, and they consist of just one index. Well, multi-dimensional array can have like an X and a Y or X, Y, Z if you really want to, and they're very useful. I've used them in many of my games, such as Color Chaos, The Next Generation, and it's a trap, obviously, because of the maze and my Prim's maze generation algorithm that uses that as well. So I use it in a lot of my projects in Roblox, and it's a very useful thing to know. So make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, but without further ado, let's get started. So I'm here in a fresh Roblox Studio project, and let's go into Service Script Service and create a script to show you what multi-dimensional arrays are. So let's start with a review over the basic Roblox array. So this is obviously how you create one. This is an array. It can store like strings, booleans, or just numbers. That's what I'll be doing now, like 0, 3, 5. There we go. And each element of this array has an index. So the index starts with 1. So you have 1. Actually, there's 1, there's 2, and there's 3. Important to note, unlike other languages, it starts with 1, not 0. Most other languages start with 0. So just keep that in mind. But this is your normal array. And it works pretty well doing like one-dimensional stuff, but like if you want to get into 2D, like for example, making like parts in roblox like just make a bunch of them in like a 2d like grid sort of thing you need to use multi-dimensional arrays because they can get very complex very quickly only using one dimension so the most basic way to create a multi-dimensional array is just let me just get rid of this real quick is just to create a normal array and let me enter in and you create an array inside of an array. So this is called a nested array. And I can put like 0, 0, 0 as all my elements. And then I can just copy this, paste it, paste it. There you go. So this is the most basic way to create a multi-dimensional array. And then I can change, like, let's say I change the middle one. And the way you'd access this is, let me just make a print statement, print array. I want to go to the second index, like the second table, and then I want to go to the second element of that second table. So basically, what this does is this code right here is we access the first, or the second, I should say, element of our array. And since our array is made up of other arrays, it accesses this second array. Since this is one, this is two, and this is three. And since we want to access this one, we need to go to the second element of our second array, and that gives us this one. So if we were to run this, you can see it prints one, because that's exactly where our one is, and that's good for a basic array. So this works fine for now, but let's say you want to have an array that's 25 by 25 or 50 by 50 and I actually use something like this when I created my maze using prims algorithm If you haven't seen that make sure to check it out but and the way I did that was just using a function and I'll define it right here that just automatically creates your multi-dimensional array So let's define it. local function create array and we'll take in the number of rows the number of columns and then the default value and this default value that is actually pretty important, but you'll find out why in just a second. So now we're going to make a loop. Or first, we're going to make our array. So local r equals these two brackets. And we're just going to leave it blank for now because we'll fill it a little bit later. And we're going to return our array. And then we're going to do a for loop for x equals 1 rows do. And then for y equals 1 calls do. And so this will run. 
for every row and then for every column that you want to make. So each time you want to make a new row, just like our array that we defined up here, let me just redefine an array so you can use this as your example. There we go. Just make it work. There we go. So this is our array. So we want a loop, and for each row, we want to create a new array. And then for each column, we want to populate this array with a bunch of values. So let's do that. So we want to go R and then put the x value in for the like the loop. And then we want to set this equal to a blank array. And we want to set r, x, y to our default value. And then that, that'll be it. So this just loops through, creates a new array for each row, and then populates that array with our default value element. And if this default value is nil, it will not create the array properly. I don't know why. There's probably a good reason, but I just don't know off the top of my head. So just make sure to put a default value. But if you don't, you can just add some code like this or zero, so it'll put zero by default. But for right now, let's just leave it like this. It's more simple. So then we can define our new array. And this will be the create array. And let's do a five by five array with the default value of zero. And we can print our new array, let's just say five, five. There we go. So if we run this, it prints zero because obviously we set it to zero. And then we can change like a value. So new array, five, five can be set to three or two and it prints two. And that's pretty good. And so since we are in Lua, you can set whoops, you can set your default value to absolutely anything, like a C frame or a vector three, even a part or a model. And that's the beauty of it, is you can make your arrays work very, very well. And if you really want to get complicated, you could probably like make a triangular array or like something like that. That stuff's pretty cool. I've never found a use for them, but there probably is, and you can use that if you want. But this may seem intimidating to the new programmer, and if you really need to use them, you want to fi find a way to use them reliably, and that's why I've created a module that can do multi-dimensional arrays for you. So let me just get it out real quick. It's called the Array to D module, and I will show you how to use it. So this is a object-oriented module. It's pretty self-explanatory, the code, if you understand that there's a few little meta methods down here that do some kind of weird stuff, but they actually make the module very, very functional, just as functional as a normal table. So let me just demo it real quick. I'm going to comment this out for now. You can still look at it if you want to, and we're gonna make a reference to our ray 2d so local ray 2d equals require game dot replicated storage dot array 2d and then we can define a new array 2d as array 2d dot new and it takes in rows and columns so let's do like a three by three array and the d you could put a default value but it automatically defaults to zero so we'll just leave it like that and we can print our new array. And usually with like a normal table, it just print out like the address, like the memory address, but I have a custom two string function. So it prints it out properly as you'd expect it. So you can see it actually prints it out. The reason it's spaced down is so this little green bar doesn't mess up the printout. And you can actually visualize what happens to your array, which is really cool. And, and the API for this module is pretty simple. So, let me just create something real quick. New ray 2D, get, let's just do one, one, just gets the element at the coordinates that I specify at this, at this instance, it's one, one. So if I were to print it out, 
let me just do that it'll print zero and then you can also do a set which is new array 2d set and let's set one one to a value of four so it sets x then y then the value that you want to set so then it prints four which is exactly what you want and i think that's all the api for it and it's actually really cool i'm going to use it a lot because it's a lot more of a hassle just to make this every single time and by the way if you are wondering you could make a three-dimensional array by just doing another nested for loop here and then making like another list inside of a list inside of a list that could work i've never really used a 3d array i've only used 2d arrays but you can do that if you want to and that's about it for this video so i hope you guys enjoyed this has been requested profusely by one of my subscribers so i hope they enjoy it but this is a very simple concept concept but very powerful as i said i used it i've used it in one of my games or two of my games actually and i've used it in my maze i use it a lot and it's very simple but very very useful but it can be complicated if you don't know what you're doing but make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video but other than that, I hope you guys have a nice day, and goodbye.